We're going to review the derivation of the Mohr circle as an analytical tool to look at the stresses in a wide range of uh, inclinations in an element. In other words, um, if we know the stress in two planes, uh, we can use the Mohr circle to look at the stress distribution at a wide range of uh, planes that are inclined at different angles. The um, normal stress and shear stress acting on a plane that is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. So we basically have a wedge and we look at the free body diagram the condition of equilibrium requires that the sum of the forces equals zero for the element to be in equilibrium. So we're going to apply that condition first in a normal stress, normal meaning perpendicular to the plane of that wedge. So if you look in detail at this um, schematic, you're going to see that that theta angle is also the theta angle shown in the forces or the stresses, vertical and horizontal. And as we multiply by the cosine and sine, uh, we end up projecting those uh, stresses that are vertical and horizontal. Now we're projecting them in the direction normal and tangential to the plane that is inclined at an angle theta. So the tangential is what we refer as to the shear stress. And the normal is the, st the stress that acting perpendicular or normal. In order to do the equilibrium, equilibrium of forces, we have to multiply the stresses by the area. But here we have the area of the wedge, and we also need to uh, project that area in the vertical direction by multiplying it by the sine and in the horizontal direction by multiplying the wedge area times the cosine of theta. So now if you add all the forces and forces meaning stress times area acting perpendicular to the wedge that is inclined at the angle theta, you're going to have that condition of equilibrium expressed by that equation. If we divide both sides by the term A, the equation simplifies. So this is the equation that we're going to apply a trigonometric relation whereby the sine uh, square is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2. And those are uh, trigonometrical rules that will allow us to modify our equation above into something like this. And if we rearrange uh, solving there, uh, that's our first equation that relates the normal stress to the horizontal and vertical stresses and also to the angle theta by applying the cosine of 2 times theta. Now we're going to move into the tangential or the shear stress. The shear stress is represented by the Greek letter tau the same way that the um, normal stress is represented by the Greek, Greek letter sigma. And again, as we mentioned before, N stands for normal or perpendicular whereas the shear, <coughs> it acts parallel to the wedge. So here again, we look at the same forces now acting on the vertical and horizontal, and we're projecting them, but this time we're going to project them in the direction parallel so that we can do the sum of forces. And also we're going to project the area uh, corresponding to the horizontal and vertical stresses by multiplying by cosine and sine such that the condition of equilibrium will require for that equation to be equal to zero 
and if we divide both terms by the area, then we end up with a simpler form, applying a trigonometric relation, then we end up with the derivation that the shear stress is related to the difference vertical to horizontal divided by 2 and that times the sine of the angle 2 theta. Those two equations are defined by a circle and that is what the Mohr circle is about. Now in this sequence of animation I'm just showing that the equation elements as we apply them we have a radius and that radius is sigma vertical minus sigma horizontal divided by 2 as shown in the graph and we have a center of that circle which is the sum of vertical and horizontal divided by 2 so if we follow the equations we can actually relate to the fact that the upper equation, the normal, is the center of the circle plus the projection of the radius along the horizontal axis. And the shear, which is the y-axis, is basically the opposite function, in other words, the sine, to the hypotenuse, which is the radius, and that becomes clear now that the Mohr circle is a graphic representation of the equations. So, in the graphic analysis, what we have to do is create this Mohr circle based on the information that we have. So, we'll do this as an example. Um, in this case, we have an element that it has horizontal stress it has vertical stress, but there's no shear along the vertical and horizontal. So we can plot those two points. Since there is no shear, the y-axis is zero. The x-axis will be sigma v and sigma h, respectively. Since the Mohr circle is drawn symmetrical to the x-axis, knowing two points, we got the circle. The principal planes are those planes that have no shear. In this case, the vertical and the horizontal planes are the principal planes. Now the stresses corresponding to those planes are what we call principal stresses. And there's two of them, a minor and a major. Uh, as the word implies, major is always the bigger and minor is the smaller. So those are basically graphically, they are located at, at the intersection of the circle with the x-axis. And that is just due to the fact that the planes that are called principal have no shear. So if there is no shear, the shear is equal to zero. In other words, the y-axis is equal to zero. So they have to be along the x-axis. The pole of the circle is a um, origin of planes. So it's a point in the circle from where you can draw angles and wherever that angle intersects the circle that gives you the stress normal and shear for that particular plane. So in this case the pole is located at the minor principal stress point sigma h also. Now if you go by the definition of the origin of plane, any line that you draw from the pole will intersect the circle at a point that represents the stresses, the y and x values for the normal and shear stresses. So that's the beauty of the Mohr circle. Once you have it built, once you have the pole, you can define stresses in any angle.